Well, good morning, uh, Facebook friends and uh, Facebook family. Um, uh, this morning, uh, there was something that I wanted to uh, share with us. Um, and I believe that, uh, like always, it's really going to, um, to bless someone. Um, I've, no I've been noticing that there's a an epidemic going on. Um, there have been a lot of debates, a lot of arguments, a lot of going back and forth. I'm not talking about the presidential um, election and all that because that's that's out of my league. That's 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 someone else's jurisdiction. Uh, but I'm talking about debating and arguments and going back and forth uh, with other people as far as the Bible, as far as doctrine, as far as uh, a topic or an understanding on whatever the case may be. Uh, and I, I speak through experience because I have been in some of them myself. And I've noticed that after the debate, after the argument, after the back and forth, sometimes I feel frustrated. And I feel like, man, did I even make a difference? Did this person even receive what I just said? And they're probably thinking the same thing. Well, this morning while I was reading, there was something that was pressed upon my heart. And I want to share it because I want to bless someone. And I want to be able to give a better understanding to those people who also can relate to what I'm going to share. There's a verse found in Proverbs chapter 26 and verse 4 and 5. I read it out of the King James Version and then for the sake of a better understanding, I read it in the Amplified. It says this, Answer not a fool according to his folly, lest thou also be like unto him. Then verse 5 says, Answer a fool according to his folly, lest he be wise in his own conceit what the what does that mean well king jimmy sometimes can get us confused with his uh with his terminology let, let me read it out of the uh, out of the uh amplified it says this don't answer the foolish arguments of fools or you will become as foolish as they are it says verse five be sure to answer the foolish arguments of fools or they will become wise in their own estimation. One of the first things I notice is that this verse seems to contradict itself. Don't answer a fool, but then answer a fool. And it's funny how they use that term fool. Well, Ben, are you calling me a fool? No. Is, is the Bible calling me a fool? Maybe not. But let's look more into what it means when it's using that word fool. Because there's a distinction between two different kinds of people, according to this verse, when it comes to arguments, when it comes to debating, when it comes to proving your point and, and sharing your opinions and bringing correction and instruction. I don't know about you, but I'm tired of being frustrated. And I need to know the difference of when it's okay to share and when I should keep my mouth shut. So let, let's go a little deeper. I took some notes. Um, the verses seem to contradict each other, but the verses actually they make a distinction between two types of people. The first person is a fool. And then the second person is one who the Bible uh, considers a wise person. The fool is a person uh, that has folly. The word, the Greek word for fool is the word moros, M-O-R-O-S. Someone who is dull in understanding, lacking a grip of reality, someone who's stupid, someone who's foolish. It's where we get the English word moron, someone who's a moron. And the word folly is the word ananoia. It's a person who has no mind, their madness, there's, there's, there's madness in their lives. They have a lack, a lack of sense. They have an incapacity to use their minds properly. They have great rage and their extreme fu fu fury. That word annoy actually reminds me of the word annoying because there's some people that you get in contact with and you communicate with them and sometimes they're just annoying to talk to when you start talking about certain things and you're sharing with them and they're sharing with you and then you're trying to prove something. And sometimes we can even be annoying. But here's the point. The first person is a fool. A fool is someone who also 
they don't know the difference between what is right and what is wrong. A fool can also be someone who doesn't understand what is good and what is bad. They can't discern the two. So in this verse, that's the first person that they're distinguishing is there's a fool. There's a fool in, 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 this, in, this, in, this, um, in this verse. The second person is a wise, the wise person. The word wise in the Greek is the word sophos. It's also uh, part, of, part of the word where we get um, uh, Sophia. So some people's names, their names are Sophia. That word actually means wisdom. But the word wise comes from the Greek word sophos. And it's someone who's learned, someone who's cultivated, someone who's skilled and clever, and they're wise. So going back to the text, let's look more closely in verse 4. It says, don't answer the foolish arguments of fools, or you will become as foolish as they are. What does that mean? A fool will remain a fool whether you respond, whether you refute, whether you debate, whether you instruct, or even if you correct them, even if you try to attempt to correct their thinking. Because in your heart, you know that what you're sharing with them and this verse that you're using, which should be something that, uh, that you use as a standard to, to, to correct someone's thinking, you know you're right. But they just, they're not getting it. Many fools shouldn't even be answered or addressed because they have already positioned themselves not to listen. And the wise person will find themselves stooping down to their level if you try to respond. That's what that verse is saying in verse 4. It says, don't answer the foolish arguments of a fool or you will become as foolish as they are. There are a lot of people that are only interested in sharing what they have to say. They can care less about what you say. The fool is only inter interested in airing his own opinions. In Proverbs 18.2, it says that fools find no pleasure in understanding, but they only want to air out their own opinions. That's, that's in, um, it's in IV version. It's Proverbs chapter 18, verse 2. They don't want to hear or receive what the wise person is saying. Why? Because they've already positioned in their own hearts that this is the way I am, this is what I believe, and I don't care what you have to say. When a person gets to that point, listen, save your breath. According to this verse, don't answer them. Because what you have to say should be so valuable and should be so heavy because it's the word of God, not just your words, that you, don't, you shouldn't have to waste your time trying to, trying to spill it out to them. Because... There's a verse that says that the fool have said in his heart, there is no God. Or the fool, it basically in their heart says, listen, I don't, I, I'm not interested in what you have to say. I'm only interested in you hearing what I'm saying. Those are the people that you should not really uh, uh, respond to. Now let's look at verse 5. Be sure to answer the foolish arguments of fools or they will become wise in their own estimation. Well, for where... Verse 4 says, don't answer them. Now, verse 5 is telling me to answer them? What, what's going on here? The wise person, on the other hand, knows how to properly assess the fool and can, through the spirit, through the spirit, not your emotions, not your mind, through the spirit, determine what the greatest need may be of that fool. And then respond to the ignorance that may be present at that time. There are many times when a fool needs to be responded in order to expose their pride and their folly. In this instant, they most likely will listen and they will receive what the wise person is saying. So there's even two kinds of fools. There's a fool who basically has already determined in his heart, I don't want to hear anything that anybody has to say. Then there's the fool that says, hey man, this is what I believe. And someone led me the wrong way. Or I just have a lack of understanding. What do you mean by that? That is, the, that is the fool that you do want to respond to. That is the fool that will receive what you have to say. And will give place to what, what comes from the word of God as you share. 
But notice how it's through the spirit that the wise person was able to determine, okay, man, this person really needs to hear what, what I have to say according to this because they're ignorant. They're ignorant in this area. And it seems that after I have assessed them, they actually do want to learn. See, one fool, he doesn't want to learn. He only wants to air out his own opinions. The other fool really wants to learn. I just want to share this one last thing. Our responses to others should not be with the motive of only to expose their lack of knowledge and to demonstrate how much we know, which is what happens a lot of times, in comparison to them. Listen, who cares about how much you know? I don't care about how much you know unless I first can sense that you love me and that you care about me. So even when you do bring correction, even when you do respond to me, whether I be a fool or whether I not be a fool, I need to know that you love me first. Not that you, we get into a debate only because you're interested in exposing my ignorance and my lack of understanding and demonstrating how much you know. Oh, wow, you know so much. That's not going to... That's not going to change anybody. It's not going to change the situation. And, it, and it's definitely not going to change that person's thinking. It should be to bring correction, instruction, but even more importantly, it's an opportunity to share the love of Christ. I just recently got into a conversation with someone and um, they basically had already, they didn't want to receive anything I had to say. And I didn't want to share too much with them, but I kind of gave them a platform to say, hey, what do you believe? And why do you believe that? And what do you base it on? And then I, I said, well, this is what I believe. And this is why I believe it. And this is what I base it on. And you know what? Sometimes there are people that will attack what you believe. There are people that will attack your thinking, your reasoning. There are people that will attack what you base it on and why you base it on. At that moment, that's when you can determine and say, okay, this is a fool. Not because I said so, but because the Bible says it. This is someone who's only interested in, in airing their own opinions, and they don't really want to understand what is precious to me as far as what the Bible teaches me. <laughs> So I encourage someone today, if you're going through a situation where you have people who you want to reach for the gospel, you know, you want to reach them with the gospel or you want to instruct them or teach them or, or you just want to have a, a conversation with them. But it almost seems like they're only interested in what they have to say. Listen, verse Proverbs chapter 26, verse four and five. Don't answer a fool according to their folly or don't answer the foolish arguments of fools. Or you will become as foolish as them. Be sure to answer the foolish arguments of fools. Or they will become wise in their own estimation. There are some people who need to be corrected. And they will receive it. But there are others who won't respond. And are only interested in allowing you to hear what they have to say. Use discernment. And use the spirit of God to assess whether or not this is an opportunity for me to share and, and bring light and bring understanding or, you know what, I'm just going to keep this to myself. At the end of, of my discussion with this individual, I basically, uh, I said to them, listen, I wish you well. I'll keep you in prayer. And I hope that somewhere along the line, uh, you will be able to uh, find whatever it is that you're looking for. <laughs> And you know what? In those instances, the only thing that we can do is pray for those individuals rather than trying to force what we believe onto them, especially if they're not going to receive it. So I encourage you this morning, use wisdom and allow God to use you as a mouthpiece. But know that there's a time to share and then there's a time to keep it to yourself. All right. God bless you. Uh, I hope this blessed someone. You can leave your comments, and uh, if you have any questions or if you uh, if this has blessed you, um, I would love to hear what you have to say, okay? All right, God bless you guys. Have a good day.